You're looking at Ryan Hill as the founder and executive director of Team Schools, a network of KIPP, K-I-P-P -P schools. By the way, what is that? KIPP is a national network of high-performing urban charter schools. Um, there are three now in Newark that are all under the Team Schools umbrella. You're part of our Democracy Work series, so let me ask you something. And If people are voting on the issue of education in a presidential campaign, how the heck do you look at presidential candidates and say, he or that guy, this guy or that guy is better on the issue of education? How do you do that? Well, for me, the main issue is school choice. And so that's, that's what I'm looking at when I look for a candidate. Who, who supports innovation in education and who supports practices that are going to help kids in cities like Newark, which is where our schools are. That could be are. Philadelphia, Baltimore. It could be Boston. It could be Hartford, Connecticut, anywhere where we're seeing on the East Coast, um, down in D.C. So that's the issue? Voucher, school choice, that's the one? Well, not necessarily vouchers. Is that vouchers. a panacea? <laughs> no, it's, it's certainly not a panacea, but it's, it's part of the equation. It has to be part of the solution. And so um, charter schools are proving nationwide that, uh, that kids in urban areas can, can do... Explain to folks, as, which I happen as, to know what charter schools are sure. because my dad runs one of the biggest in the country. <laughs> he sure does, and one of the best. Yeah. Thank you very much, but uh, even though I get no credit for it, he does. <laughs> Explain to folks what a charter school is. Why is it not a regular, typical public high school or school? Well, it is a public school, and it's publicly funded, but... Um, the, and the kids are chosen by lottery. So any kid who comes to our schools uh, can get in if they win the lottery, right? And, um, but the, the way that it's different from a, a traditional public school is that we get to um, innovate in, in ways that traditional public schools often can't because we are not part of a bigger district. We are kind of our own district. And so our teachers des design the curriculum, for instance, and our parents have a big voice in what happens in the Makes schools. Makes a big difference. Right, it, it certainly does. We need more of that in the country? I think so, yeah. A quick question, a national public policy on this. Um, Barack Obama, okay, uh, talks about big educational change. You told our producers he advocates big educational change, 30 seconds or less. What are we talking about? Well, uh, Obama and McCain are both for uh, change in education. Uh, on the issue of No Child Left Behind, I think Obama is... Um, is uh, certainly more opposed to No Child Left Behind Act. Explain that. Right everyone now. keeps talking about No Child Left Behind, the act, as if everyone knows what it is. It was a change in the federal law that said what? Well, it said, and this was very important, it said what our schools say, which is that it doesn't matter what your racial background is, what your income is, or even if you're a special ed student. It doesn't matter. You will be expected to achieve at, at, at a high level. Um, where it got kind of tangled up is in the implementation. So the underpinnings of No Child Left Behind are outstanding. They're right on the money. What's wrong with it? Uh, what's wrong with it is that they kind of flipped the federal and the state role, uh, as far as, as, far as um, in, in my opinion. So uh, what No Child Left Behind says is um, you, all the kids have to be up to a certain proficiency level, but the state gets to de decide what that level will be. What's wrong with that? And Well, what's wrong with it is then you have states uh, across the country defining proficiency at every different level. So you're saying so, the Fed should determine it? I, I think so. The federal should, wait a minute, the, national go the federal government should have national standards for education. That's what I One believe. standard. Yes. What stands in the way of that happening? Uh, well, states' rights stand in the way. The states don't Small want to issue. give that up. Yeah. <laughs> that, <laughs> does that's Obama all. support that national standard? Um, I don't know, actually. I don't, I, I don't think he does. And I, there's been no... Um, but I, don't, I, haven't, I, don't, I actually don't know what how about, his how about McCain? is on that. Um, I, I think McCain probably would, but this is not... The problem in this election is that this has not been the discussion. It's been either we hate NCLB or... We should change it, but NCLB no child left behind. Come out. Right. So, so, so when people in the campaigns, the candidates talk about no child left behind, it's terrible, it's good, this or that. How does that really help voters better understand the issue of education and the role of the federal government? Right. Well, that is part of the problem. Is that it's been given this blanket. Uh, NCLB has been branded as this bad thing, whereas, like I said, the the, phil the philosophy behind it is good. But the, um, the the devil's in the details, and and that's what needs to be fixed. But very rarely does the political discourse come down to the level of the details. Let me ask you: In the time we have left, if people really want to better understand Ryan exactly what the issue of education is about on the federal level, the role of the president, role of Congress, what do you advocate that they do? Because democracy. Democracy Works is about helping people make the smartest decisions about their lives and their families and the communities. What do you do? Well, for me, the learning experience came as a teacher, and, and that's, that's how I learned. And um, I mean, the internet has any you know, variety of resources, and, and you can dig a lot deeper on these issues there. But getting involved in a school is another way to do it. Actually getting involved. Right. You know, it's funny. You can talk about who gets elected president, but in the end, a lot of it has to do with what we as parents. We have a 4-year-old and a 5-year-old and a 16-year-old. Uh, all in public schools, and if we're not involved, you don't blame the president.
you look at yourself and you look at the teachers. And Ryan, I want to thank you for joining us. Thank Come you. Come back. We'll talk more next time. All Good right. Job. Thanks a lot.